Hi, I'm Phoebe, Rehabilitation Physician at Eden Private Hospital on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. I'm particularly interested in embracing assistive technology and how this can enhance patients' rehabilitation management and experience, as well as their functional outcomes and quality of life. I'm here today at Eden Private Hospital, located in Karoi in the Noosa hinterland. Eden is a private hospital within the Aurora Healthcare Group. The hospital specialises in a number of medical services, including rehabilitation. We offer a wide range of inpatient and day therapy programs to the Sunshine Coast, Gympie, White Bay, South Burnett and beyond. Following a successful trial of robotic therapy in 2020, the hospital introduced a full suite of robotic rehabilitation equipment earlier this year, the first in Aurora's national rollout through multiple rehabilitation hospitals in the group. The enhanced therapy has already helped numerous patients regain lost function. We are using new technology, robotic mediated rehab, as a supplement to conventional evidence-based treatment to provide patients with more intensive rehabilitation. This innovative equipment uses robotics, sensors, virtual reality and gamification to engage patients physically and cognitively. Our robotic technology lab incorporates a number of varied devices and software applications, including those that focus on finger and hand therapy, cognition and visual scanning, balance, gait analysis, upper limb and lower limb function. Benefits are evident within a wide range of our rehab patients. We see improvement in functional deficits resulting from stroke, traumatic brain injury, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, musculoskeletal and spinal conditions. To overcome these functional deficits, more repetition of movement is provided as compared to traditional approaches alone, which as we all know, is important in neuroplasticity and recovery. We feel we are successfully incorporating robotic rehab in a way which is complementary to our pre-existing multidisciplinary rehabilitation. We are using robotic therapy as an adjunct to traditional functional retraining to provide more stimulus, more repetition, and more rehab therapy time for patients. Let's talk about our experience in setting up robotic therapy in a rehab unit. Prior to using such technology, concerns collated from the team included the cost of the equipment, the space required to house the equipment, staff training, the amount of staffing and time required when in use, ease of use of equipment, understanding its function and outcomes, gimmick versus real results, and even which patients would be suitable. For instance, is it only appropriate for neuro patients and programs? Different robotic devices from different manufacturers were reviewed and trialled by the Eden team and other teams within the Aurora Healthcare Group. Reasons for not continuing with some technologies included limited staff training by the supplier and poor support, appropriateness of devices, difficulty in interpreting computed results, requirement for large amounts of space, equipment not height adjustable, and some technology unable to have metal in the near vicinity, including wheelchairs and seating. During the trial of the now fully implemented robotic assisted therapy equipment, we followed a process of gathering patient feedback, staff feedback, trialing a wide range of different diagnoses, 
and investigating a variety of applications for the various devices. A review of timetabling and staffing was undertaken. We had trained allied health staff present to set up and supervise the technology room. Patients still received their usual rehab therapy sessions with allied health and rest breaks were included to manage fatigue. Timetabling enabled both inpatients and day patients to participate, although as always, Flexibility is crucial to enable best outcomes. Specific goals are determined and baseline function is assessed. This enables us to monitor progress, such as increase in active finger range of movement and strength, and subsequent improvement in independence to complete activities of daily living. Patients might use a couple of specific devices or all of the available devices as part of a circuit, depending on their condition, deficits, and individual goals. An example of this is using Amadeo for passive or active assisted range of motion in conjunction with Pablo for elbow and shoulder movement. Real-time feedback provides instant results to the allied health professional and most importantly, the patient. This enables results to be tracked. It also provides significant motivation and encouragement to patients to strive to improve further. We quickly found that a wide range of patient presentations were benefiting. Neurological conditions such as stroke, traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, nerve injury, we expected. However, we also saw results in patients we hadn't anticipated. For example, a patient admitted with decreased balance improved whilst using Miro, completing cognitive and upper limb tasks whilst in standing. As with any change in services, we collated feedback from our multidisciplinary team. Some of the negatives included gaps in the software, for example, no memory specific tasks on the Miro, the staff training requirement, usually one day, space required for the devices and the expense of the equipment. Fortunately, these negatives were outweighed by the numerous recognized positives illustrated by the following staff feedback. All machines have the ability to set timeframes and repetitions, so patients can continue to independently complete what is required for functional improvement. Patients generally give positive feedback. They find the device-based therapy simple to use, challenging, motivating, enjoyable and fun, even for those patients who are not technologically savvy. Patients find it helpful to see their hand or leg moving following injuries and exciting to see and feel a flaccid hand moving. Software is similar across all the devices, enabling therapists and patients to easily transition between different modes of treatment. Since the introduction of the equipment, some therapists now prefer using the robotic assisted therapy. Passive movements in stroke rehab is an excellent example of how our therapy approach has matured and evolved. Once rehab team members are proficient, including allied health assistants and nursing staff, patient setup is straightforward and expands the patient's opportunity to engage in therapy and enhance their own recovery. Visual assessment feedback, particularly TMO, is really helpful for patients to see where their deficits are and to understand the impact of these deficits on everyday function. The setup options of Pablo are seemingly endless. Therapists have the ability to individualize treatments to the patient's needs and its use is limited only by the imagination of the patient and the treating team. There is a continual challenge that adjusts as the patient improves. 
The robots remember the latest settings for patients and will default to this on the next session, assisting the progression of a patient's program. The devices have carryover to functional tasks specifically related to daily activities. Repetition of movement is emphasised to the patients as critical in rehabilitation and motivates the patient to endure the required volume. Feedback provides in-time targets and effort required to achieve goals. Let's discuss some practical examples of how our patients have benefited. 74-year-old Phil is three months post right-sided hemorrhagic stroke with hemichoresis and inattention. He has been attending inpatient rehabilitation at Eden. On admission, he required hoist transfer and full assistance with all self-cares. Phil has been using different pieces of robotic equipment throughout his rehab admission. Early on, Phil was able to use Miro and Amadeo while seated for upper limb retraining and cognitive and perceptual retraining with a particular emphasis on scanning. As he progressed, he was able to use Timo for balance work, which was used in conjunction with gait retraining. With this, he required a therapist present for safety. He then advanced to Amigo with its cycling, leg press and stepping functions, encouraging him to modulate his weight transfer. Once set up, Phil is able to perform his rehab on Amigo independently and has shown improvements in leg strength. Therapists working with Phil found robotic therapy to be interesting and rewarding. Weekly changes were able to be tracked. The knowledge gained from instant feedback for results and performance was highly beneficial to therapists and to Phil. This in particular was important in coaching and motivating Phil to reach his goals. A variety of therapy was also a benefit. Phil did require a therapist still present for monitoring. Once established, more independent practice was enabled as compared with conventional therapy. Phil is now able to transfer independently, mobilise with a stick and lower limb orthotic, and requires only minimal assistance with self cares. He is discharging to home next week and will continue rehab and robotic assisted therapy as a day patient. Our next patient example is a 30 year old female who had a spinal cord infarct. Her goals were to improve finger and hand range of movement and strength so as to care for her young child. Shown here using Amadeo, once set up, she is able to control, perform, and track her therapy independently. Our experience to date at Eden and the experience of other rehab teams within the Aurora group during trials and with their own equipment leads us to believe that a combination of traditional therapy and robotic assisted therapy is a future direction for us. While cost is a limiting factor, we believe the investment is of critical importance for our patients and our rehab teams. A good communicative relationship with the device supplier is very important. Whilst change is scary and having something completely new can be intimidating and initially seem like extra work for staff, there is a growing research base that demonstrates beneficial outcomes for patients. Having an enthusiastic and motivated team helps enormously. We found it was paramount to have a key staff member to coordinate training, patient selection, monitor the use of devices 
as well as their effectiveness. This person could problem solve any issues which may become roadblocks, for instance, technical issues, placement of equipment, training and support of staff, timetabling, and liaison with the supplier. Interestingly, at Eden Private Hospital, we are now utilising our robotic therapy for our mental health patients. In addition, we find it useful for cognitive retraining in dementia and also as part of our management of patients with chronic pain. There are, of course, also research opportunities. Innovation in rehabilitation not only improves breadth of therapy, but also significantly enhances clinical outcomes, patient experience, and therapist satisfaction.